In the 1970s, a new style of popular music was beginning to take hold in New York. A man named Cool DJ Herc was creating the beginnings of hip-hop culture by combining hard styles of funk together. Alongside Herc was an MC known as Coke LaRock. Coke LaRock would freestyle rhymes which created the original styles of rap. Originally, rap was done at underground parties as a way to keep the crowds entertained. After Coke LaRock's rapping, others started creating their own styles of rap. In the summer of 1979, the funk group known as Fatback Band released their song, King Tim III, and was a hit in the clubs. In December of 1979, a group of producers calling themselves the Sugar Hill Gang released the first commercially successful rap song called Rapper's Delight. These early successes in hip-hop helped spark one of the biggest cultural revolutions in music history. In the 80s, rap struggled to gain momentum. When MTV launched in 1981, rap music was not featured or was briefly being done in pop songs. It wasn't until Billie Jean by Michael Jackson airing on MTV that other black artists were even being featured. Then in 1988, Yo! MTV Raps aired and that started showcasing more rap music. Fortunately, early artists and groups including Will Smith, De La Soul, N.W.A., and Public Enemy were helping grow the rap and hip-hop community. In 1989, Will Smith became the first rapper to win a Grammy, and this is what helped put rap into the mainstream. Because of ongoing racial prejudice and censorship, rap did have its struggles. However, the efforts of these early rap artists helped the rap community grow. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Salt and pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. The 90s was a rough time for rap music. Despite early commercial success, there was a lot of infighting between rap labels on the East and West Coast. The West Coast of the United States became a contender in the music industry in Los Angeles, going up against the East Coast in New York City. The competition led to violent confrontations between the two labels. Also, because rap is more unrestricted in its lyrics, it faced massive controversy over the use of profanity. This led to the U.S. government holding a government hearing trying to force rap to tone down their language. This didn't work and ultimately was seen as a publicity stunt. Tensions between the East and West Coast labels kept growing and more violent confrontations continued even at events such as music award shows. This ultimately led to the deaths of Tupac, Shakur, and Biggie Smalls in 1996 and 1997. After these two incidents, the East and West Coast finally decided to put their differences aside and reconcile. In the early 2000s, rap saw a burst in popularity. Artists like Eminem, Missy Elliott, Nas, Jay-Z, Common, and Most Def were bringing their styles of rap from the 90s and approving upon it in the new millennium. In 2006, rap took a big step forward when Jay-Z became the first black man to take over a major record label. Before becoming a rapper himself, Kanye West was producing amazing backtracks for other rappers. Most Def launched a successful HBO show called Def Jam Poetry that featured rappers, poets, and activists to continue building upon the community outreach that rappers were already doing. Modern rap from 2009 onward has faced some scrutiny. With the addition of EDM, rap has started using more generic loops. Some rappers started to enter the industry for the money and less about the message rap was trying to spread. However, many great things are still happening in the rap and hip-hop community. The biggest positive in the rap and hip-hop industry is the community outreach. Rappers like Jay-Z, Africa Ba'ambada, and others helped rebuild Brooklyn and the Bronx. 
Common and other artists are always trying to improve impoverished communities like Chicago, Atlanta, and Compton. Rap is by no means perfect, but it continues to be one of the most expressive musical genres in modern music history.